Bruce Barber was a Southern Baptist guy who worked for Thomas Nelson Publishers. And uh, it was his task this day to go and visit a man and help him write a book named Benny Hinn. The book was titled Good Morning, Holy Spirit. You've probably heard of it. And Benny recalls that when this man walked in and set up to work, he was actually smoking a cigar. Benny said to him, what, why do you smoke a cigar when you work? And the man said, well, it, it relaxes me. And so the story goes that Benny said to him, well, can we please pray? Let's pray for this book that we're about to write. And as Benny began praying, Bruce began sobbing. Cigar still in his mouth. And he said, can you feel this? And he said, yes, it's the Holy Spirit. That man stopped smoking and never smoked again. And it was noted that as people of that company worked on this book, many of them people that didn't believe or know of the things of the Spirit were weeping as they put it together. You see, Benny, ben, Benny Hinn had something extra at work in his life. In the early days of his salvation, his family persecuted him for his faith. And he used to go to his room and shut the door and seek the Lord for hours. And that man had such a touch of God that people would pick him up to go to some meeting or revival or hear some speaker. And when he hopped in the car, they'd begin to weep because he carried such a presence of the Lord with him. There is more. There is more for each and every one of you. Did you notice how the Spirit of God moved through that prayer Benny prayed that went beyond that man's beliefs? And we need this kind of power to minister to the Lord's people. That just like the peace of God transcends understanding, His Holy Spirit transcends and moves the heart. Catherine Boo, the young pastor's wife and mother to four small children, her husband William often asked her to join him in sharing in gospel revival meetings he led. But she was always afraid of the idea of speaking. And then one day, finishing a message to over a thousand people sitting there, she felt an incredible burden to get up and share. These are her words. I felt I would sooner die than speak publicly. And the devil said to me, besides, you're not even prepared to speak. You look like a fool and you have nothing to say. But he made a mistake. He overdid himself for once. It was that word which settled it and I said, ah, that's the point. I've never been willing to be a fool for Christ. Now I will be one. So she got up. God only knows how any mortal ever did hang on the arm of omnipotence as she did. She felt as if she was clinging to some human arm, yet it was the divine arm to hold her. She confessed to the people that night that she'd been living in disobedience to God, being too timid to share the message of Christ publicly. She repented in front of everyone and offered her life for God to use in any way he might choose, even if it meant sharing the gospel when she felt uncomfortable or fearful. She later recalled how the people responded. There was more weeping in the chapel that day than ever before. Many dated a renewal in righteousness from that very moment and began a life of devotion and consecration to God. That honest confession, testifying to the truth, did what talk could never have done over 20 years. Did you notice her surrender, her obedience to the Lord? Did you notice how she recognised that there was a lie that the devil was speaking to her that hindered her from fulfilling the call the Lord had and from that breakthrough? But she recognised it and displaced it. That's the spirit of truth. There's more. 
There's more for you. In 1966, with a one-way ticket to a slow boat to China, 22-year-old Jackie Pullinger, with a belief that God had sent her with 10 pounds in her pocket, she went. She said, I'll get off when I feel led. She ended up in the walled city in Hong Kong. A putrid maze of squalor where she found the outcasts of humanity, people given over to the worst depravities, opium dens and gangs and prostitutes. And she began to share the gospel, the cross, the great love and sacrifice, but she found very little success. That was until she was baptised in the Holy Spirit's power. And a couple came and prayed for her and she received the gift of tongues but she didn't understand the purpose or power of that gift. So she didn't use it much. And then a couple from America came and visited her and taught her about tongues and told her how it would build her up and help her witness and immediately her ministry changed. She prayed in tongues every day. She walked the streets praying in tongues and drug addicts and gang members started coming to the Lord. And she discovered and realised that the same power that would save these people would then deliver them from drugs. And so as soon as they'd be saved, she'd lay hands on them, they'd receive the gift of tongues, and she'd instruct them that as you feel your withdrawal pains, pray in the Spirit. And these people over the course of hours would be delivered from opium addiction. Holy Spirit power. Did you ever realise that the Holy Spirit can do more than the rehab centres can do that governments place all over the place. There's no limit. During the summit, Uncle John made this statement, which I want to go back to, and it's the basis of what we're looking at today. And I, I quote what he said, there is so much more. There is no end to the variety of giftedness, power and freedom that is actually available in Christ. There is no end of the things that God can do. Our problem is we don't seek them. We don't ask. Excuse me. There is more. There is more for you. I brought up those stories just to show you the different elements and for those here that do have the gift of tongues, you have a powerful gift at work in you. Let's have a look at some scripture. Luke 11, uh, 5 to 8. And so where we are, the Lord has, he's been asked by one of the disciples, teach us to pray. They observed his prayer life and these guys wanted to learn how to pray themselves. And right after he gives the Lord's Prayer, he begins and tells a story. You'll be familiar with this, but let's have a look at it. Verse 5, and he said to them, which of you has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me your three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. Have you ever had to go to your neighbor's place to borrow some flour or a lemon for some baking? Think about this story, let alone knocking on their door in the middle of the night, disturbing them, saying, hey, can I have some food because someone's arrived and I've got nothing to give them? That, the point Jesus is making here is it's not the friendship that brings the fulfilment of the need, but it's the boldness of the person asking. 
And so he's speaking of himself. The boldness or the persistence or the shamelessness of the person who's asking that caused his needs to be met. And what are we talking about here? We're talking to prayer. So his instruction to us is we have to be bold. It doesn't matter that he's just your friend. But you, by your bold requests, by being shameless in your request, receive all that you need. I wonder sometimes in our asking, if we put too much emphasis, we can put too much emphasis on shame. Lord, I don't deserve this. Lord, you know, how could you give this to me? But in this he's saying, take a hold of what he's given. Be shameless in your asking, which means we throw out the I don't deserve and we stand on the footing of, Lord, I must have this. Would you give it to me? Thank you that you have promised it to me. And he goes on and he says in verse 9 and 10, or in Luke 11, And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. There is more for those who ask. There is more for those who seek. There is more for those who knock. And it's promised to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. So the Lord continues in this teaching on teach us to pray. Not only do we need to be bold and persistent, we have to actually ask and keep on asking. We have to actually knock. We have to actually carry that persistence on, but carry the belief that we will have the very thing for which we ask. If you're asking for more of him, more of him you will have. If you're seeking more of his power, more of his power you will have. And may the truth of that permeate, permeate your life. We read on verse 11, no, sorry, verse 13. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more? Can you say that? How much more? Will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? There is more for those who ask him. And even though we are evil know how to give good gifts to our kids, we want our kids to be blessed. We want them to have good things. Our Father wants even more to see our joy in receiving the gift he has for us. But we have to ask for it and he will give it. It's not that we haven't received his spirit already, but there is more. But we will ask boldly. Notice that Jesus was asked to teach on prayer and he ends on asking for more of the Holy Spirit. So in order to be a good prayer, to have more of the spirit of prayer, you need more of the spirit. It's power in your life. Let's look a little bit more at what the Holy Spirit does in John 16, 14 and 15. These are Jesus' words. He, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to bring glory to Jesus. And you want to know how to bring more glory to the Lord in your life? Seek more of his power in your life. It's amazing that everything the Father has, Jesus has. And by the Spirit, everything that Jesus has is declared to us 
through the Spirit. There is no limit to what you have access to walking in the Holy Spirit. Everything. It reminds me of the Great Commission. All authority is mine, therefore go. Everything my Father has, I have also. A life surrendered to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, is one that brings more glory to the Lord. John 14, 26 and 27, we see a different name of the Holy Spirit, the Helper. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. We have a Helper. You have a Helper. An ever-present help who is with you forever. Help is available to those that receive it, that look for it. You're not alone, even if you feel alone. But would you throw off those feelings and walk with the Spirit daily for his help? He's also the teacher. His purpose is to teach you all the things and to bring to your remembrance all the things that Jesus said. And he can do this because he declares, because he proceeds from the Father. There is more for you because the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, brings the fullness of the Father to you. Jesus placed his peace on them and We've been taught about the authority we have to place anointings and to place graces and that we can give a gift that the world can't give. He's the comforter because God is the God of all comfort. So the Holy Spirit is our comfort because he's manifesting that part of God to us. He's the spirit of truth because Jesus is the way and the truth. He doesn't speak of his own authority. He helps because he knows our frame. And the Holy Spirit heals because our Father God is the healer. The main point of today is there is more power and presence for you available for your life to be an impact on those around you, but would you be one who boldly and persistently continues to seek? And if you do, you will have the thing for which you seek. We need more of this power in order to minister to those in our generation, not just those that know him, but those that don't know him, think of that story of Benny Hinn. To carry such power that hearts are softened, you can have this power. Be bold in your asking and you'll receive. Throw off shame and boldly take a hold of what he has promised for you. I think there's a challenge there to cleave to the cross and not to the world. There could be things in your life, the Holy Spirit will speak to you, that you have to, in fact, let go of, so to have more of him. Think of Catherine, letting go of that fear of man, letting go of that fear of being a fool, and actually determining, well, I will be a fool. Cleave to the cross. What things must you drop? The Holy Spirit, we spoke of as being a comforter, but where do you go for your comfort? Because if it's not him, then that's potentially a counterfeit comfort. Because Corinthians talks about how our God is a God of all comfort. So consider, you need, we need his comfort, his presence, We can't go to other things to truly be in that comfort.
We need more prayer with friends and family. Think about how Jesus placed that peace on the disciples. And I wanted to encourage everyone that as you share meals with one another, that you do this, that we carry that releasing of the grace. We had some people over last night and before they left, they said, can we pray? They put peace on us. They blessed us. And this is such a powerful grace that you can minister to those who are in your families, but you can minister to those people that don't even know the Lord. You can say, can I pray a blessing on you? And then just watch and see what the Holy Spirit does in their hearts. When people travel, make it your, your goal to say, well, before you go, let's pray a blessing. Let's, let's bless your travels. Whatever you have known in your walk with the Lord, as rich or as deep as it has been, there is more for you. I'd ask the worship team to come back, please. And they're going to help us to sing a couple of verses of a song, and then I'll say a bit more, but... just quiet in our hearts and find faith and surrender and be encouraged that the Lord wants us to have this power. He wants our lives to be powerful. He said of Jesus, greater things you would do than me. So for each of you, these greater things can and will be done. And this precious gift of the Holy Spirit, there is more. There's a deep fellowship. There's a walking in the Spirit daily. There's power that's meant to flow from your lives to heal people, to change a city. And I thank you, it transcends mindsets and beliefs and softens hearts. Oil, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Thank you, Lord. As they sing, meditate on the words, press into the Lord. Listen to what he would say to you today. I'd like to invite anyone that would like the laying on of hands for the purpose of receiving more Holy Spirit power. You're welcome to come forward and stand at the front. Encourage everyone to keep seeking, to keep asking, to be bold, but to rest. He has promised this to you and your life will be a blessing. Your life. I'm reminded of Catherine Kuhlman that in her last days, people were asking her what she wanted and she didn't want to fuss. She just said, I just want flowers. That dear woman, when she passed, it was reported that on every floor of that hospital, you could smell flowers. These are things of the Spirit. There is so much more. And I thank you, Lord, that this people will bring about impact for Christ. We live in exciting days and we are hungry for you. And on behalf of us all, we must have your spirit. We must have your power. Would you pour it out afresh upon us this day, O oh Lord? We seek you, Holy Spirit. 
and we receive this precious gift of them, Father. Permeate our lives with the fragrance of Jesus. There's still time for you if you're sitting there in your seat and you're umming and ahhing about whether to respond. I encourage you, don't wait till you get home. Start seeking now. The Lord is here speaking to hearts and moving hearts. But in this time, this is the start of something greater. And there's no limit to the unique giftedness, graces and power that it do in each of you. Each one can be completely different. There's no limit. Lord, we throw off any expectation. It needs to be a certain thing. But we want you to be God. And by your own definition, baptize in the Holy Spirit all the people here. The team will minister to us, but keep seeking now. Look to the Lord now. But set your heart to be the one that says, I'm asking and I'm going to keep on asking. Seeking and keep on seeking. Knocking, looking to the Lord, looking for His breakthrough. Looking for His endowment of a greater grace. You don't need someone to lay hands on you right now. You need to look to the Lord. Set your heart to believe. The team will continue to sing and will continue to seek a little bit further. Thank you. The Lord has set before you today an invitation to keep on seeking Him. Day and night, it's the prayer of the heart. It's the ability to pray without ceasing because the eyes of your heart are looking to Him to meet with you in a special way. And that special way is possible. And in Jesus' name, I throw off every doubt and the lies of the devil that try to hinder us from having the full spectrum, the full endowment, the full empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But the invitation is for those that take it up. Before we close the meeting, I wonder if Let's, there's, there's healing power here. The presence of the Lord is here. And if you have a need in the body, whatever it may be, would you raise your hand? Would you step out and acknowledge, I need a healing? And corporately, we're going to declare and speak a word of healing. The Lord will go out and heal. Lord, I thank you for your healing power that is present in this room. And like Peter declared, I declare to everyone here, Jesus Christ heals you. Jesus Christ heals you. Thank you for the Lord's benefits who saves and heals. Thank you for the Lord's body, that by His stripes we are healed. Thank you that you were wounded for our sicknesses and our infirmities. And may healing power go out throughout this room right now, healing everyone, every issue in the body. Lord, we receive it from you. Do not think for a second he doesn't want to heal you. For some of us, it's a, we, we know he, he can heal, but you have to set your heart to believe he will heal. When he came down from the, the mountain and met the leper, and the leper said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. Jesus touched the man before he even prayed and said, I'm willing, be clean. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. And may the grace of God lead us and guide us each day. Your spirit reveal Jesus to us. The team will continue to play and this place is open for those who want to continue to seek. But please feel free also you can move on to fellowship, do what you need to do. Just respect those that are still seeking. 
But remember, the invitation is for those who go on and keep on seeking. Be blessed. And I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit helping us through the week, through the months. And the hand of God guiding us and the fellowship of Jesus making us who we need to be. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And may we see you and know you all the more. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Peace to you. Grace to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, team.